And I've got a link to Bruce Horner. I'm going to talk about him a bit today. And at the bottom of this, I've got stuff from what you put in your in the surveys that I got back. I want to talk about the surveys for a little bit. About four people speak language other than English well enough to, to function. Almost 40%. That's pretty impressive because not many international people take online classes. They don't count for their uh, immigration and legal reasons. So I don't usually get non native speakers. So that's pretty pretty impressive. There's a lot more bilingualism. Uh, I noticed this one one was strongly agree, five was strongly disagree. Most people say it's not right to do nothing. So it, the attitude of the class is if in doubt, it's good to talk to people. And tell, it's better to make a mistake telling someone something might be wrong and to not say anything. Which is how I felt as a student. Not how my boss felt when I worked at the writing center at KU. But uh, our faculty at JCCC is about split down the middle when the students write a statement. You don't know. You might get a teacher who really thinks it's a good idea and might be with people that really hate it. I like the metric question because it, it shows me I've got 25, 27%. Say so strongly agree we should adopt the metric system, and about 36% are like, well, whatever. Only 1% strongly disagree. You're a logical crowd. You see the future. You realize that um, measuring things by the length of your foot really doesn't work that well, and everything's being built in other countries. Nothing's built in America. They all use the metric system. We need to adapt, or we won't survive. Okay, you tend to see that. You agree with that. At least over 60% of you do. Um, I found this almost a perfect bell curve. Teachers are likely to see intentional race, intentionally racist attitudes or language in students' papers. It's not that common, but I guess I don't. The question might not be so good because in my career, yeah, I've seen it. But in a typical semester, no, I don't think I do see intentionally racist attitudes very often. I see some unintentionally racist stuff or oppressive stuff. But that's, I think school's a pretty safe place. The next question, um, there's nothing grammatically wrong with the ordered modifiers in the expression, the red little wagon. And I would not advise a peer writer to change it. All right, overwhelmingly, almost 80% disagree. They would tell somebody to change that. If you read somebody's paper, you are doing peer editing, and you saw someone wrote, I read a, my favorite toy as a child was the red little wagon. I had a college graduate grammar professor told me there's nothing wrong with saying the red little wagon. There's no reason we can't say that. However, my wife, who knows grammar way better than I do, because she's a non-native speaker, she speaks four or five languages, English was like her third or fourth, and she studied grammar. And there is something called the royal order of adjectives. Adjectives of size come before adjectives of color. Now, everyone who is a native speaker can do that. They don't know there's a rule called the royal order of adjectives, but they can do it automatically and they know when it's wrong. The question here is, when it comes to language, is just being understood good enough for what we do in the classroom, uh, or what we do in college, what we do in business? Is just being understood good enough, or do we want things to sound right, correct? Be careful in your essays using words like right and correct and proper because they're circular arguments. They're almost always a circular argument because what is right, what is correct, what is proper is other ways of saying what I expect. And usually it comes down to something arbitrary like this is the way I talk. I expect everyone to talk like me. This is the way my mom taught me to talk. This is how I'm supposed to talk. Now the next question now, um, tricky because Race is still touchy. Um, I have a multiracial family. I have in my, if you count, sisters and brothers and cousins and fathers and not cousins, well, cousins, yeah, I've got black, Jewish, Chinese. How I've got it. And to quote, who's that guy? Chris Rock. Chris Rock says we all have a gay cousin. Um, I feel pretty comfortable. Even I feel slightly uncomfortable talking about issues of race. You have to be careful. But I think too much political correctness 
strangles language, strangles communication, and it can be detrimental to learning. So I want to, what stays in the classroom, what happens in the classroom stays in the classroom. If someone says something stupid or absolutely accidentally racist or foolish, we'll keep it in the classroom. I think we should say something about it. We should draw attention to it, but we should not hold a grudge or try and get somebody kicked out of school or sue my teacher because they accidentally said something that offended you. When it comes to race, it's almost almost impossible not to offend somebody. And we all have a race and we all have a language and all of our languages are marked and have. Anyway, if I were grading or reviewing a student paper for a class other than this comp two class and I saw black English vernacular. Don't say abonics. I hate that term. Um, you could say African-American vernacular English, but I think BEV is more accurate. I would draw attention to it and advise the student to use mainstream U.S. English, Muse, also known as standard academic English, and I think Horner calls it edited American English or edited academic English. You can use Horner's term or Muse. Don't say standard English because it really isn't a standard, but here we've got a fairly good majority agreeing that they want to draw attention to it. Um, either they're not afraid of, of having discussions about language, or or they think that black English vernacular is wrong, which I've never said that. I, had, I remember this middle linebacker at KU um, from the projects in Chicago, and he talked with a strong black English vernacular. And uh, I remember him saying, I don't have any dialect, I just talk the way I talk. Well, he spoke in every way, shape and form, textbook, black English vernacular. But he was always told that it was wrong. All his life he was told that it was wrong, it was broken, it was fractured, it was not as good as mainstream US English or edited academic English. Um, it's just as good, it's not as privileged, it's not as appreciated. But you can do things in black English that you can't do in standard English. And that's part of the reason why it's so much fun for people to use Black English vernacular. Um, that's it, it. I get upset with terms like conversate, which is making it, it's a back formation from conversation. There's a term we call converse, meaning to talk with people. But you have conversation most times when you you, you change an ate to ation, narrate narration, uh, dictate dictation. Conversation must be a noun form of the verb conversate. Well, actually, only recently it used to be converse, but um, I can't control the English language as much as I should be made in charge and put in control of it. Not most people disagree, but there's some concern that you might lose part of your language of nurture if you start changing the way you speak. This is what really gets me interested with you guys. Strong, we have a strong bias in this class. So disagree that you should not be able to tell if a job applicant has been to college by the way they speak in an interview. College shouldn't change the way you sound, your accent, your dialect. If that's true, that seems to be at all as with what a lot of people are saying in the, in the written comments. Language talk, it really gets down to what we value. Um, I find this really interest, interesting because you guys are all part of a youth cohort that uh, linguists don't fully understand yet. I, I think that job applicants are screened by language. When I was in the South, I remember people from the the Deep South complaining that they would not get job interviews or they would call people from the North and be treated like they were stupid because they talked with a Southern dialect. I know that I, at one point in my career, got a job that I was being considered with one other person. It was down to two people and I got the job because I spoke standard English and the other person spoke black English vernacular, actually. I also think my qualifications were better for the job. However, on paper, my boss really for them, it came down to language. And yet, most people say being to college shouldn't change the way you talk. It evidently didn't change the way that other person who didn't get the job spoke. But the truth is, I didn't learn how to speak the language and dialect I'm using now in college. 